Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I'm a bit lost, really. Um, am I headed towards Tunnel? I am. Is it far? Are you Are you headed there? I could drop you off if you'd like. Yeah. friends. I've got a girlfriend. When was the last time you had a girlfriend? You get lonely then? You have very nice hands. You have beautiful hands. Do you want to look at me? looking at me before. I liked it. So you never think about it then, being the girl? I have a place about 30 minutes away. Will you come with me there? Hello humans, welcome to The Void. Many of you will probably recognise this aesthetic from the show Stranger Things, but did you know that the show's DP, Tim Ives, was actually inspired by the effect originally created for Jonathan Glazer's film Under the Skin, where an alien predator in the guise of a human, played by Scarlett Johansson, seeks out fleshy victims with little more than a white van, her eyes, and some awkward conversation. Oh, and a ninja on a motorbike. But seriously, just go and watch the film. It's amazing for so many reasons. So in Glazer's film, before the amorous Scots unwittingly sink into a paralyzing black tar-like substance, the surface they walk on is in fact a highly reflective black glass. Stranger Things use this aesthetic but put their own spin on it by replacing the solid glass floor with a shallow water pool to create that gorgeous rippling surface effect, which was a great evolution of the look. And that's what we've decided to recreate. So this is actually a Stranger Things under the skin in camera mashup. Let's see how it's done. So as you can see, what we've built here is a super shallow pool with blackout drape around it. It's only about an inch deep, which is just enough to give us some nice clean ripples, but shallow enough that Pete can walk through it and still appear to be walking on the surface. We brought in Pat the Builder for this rig. To avoid any chance of leaks, we opted to lay a single 6x7 metre piece of pond liner, which we adhered to the floor with a strong contact adhesive, leaving a border around the edges for the timber perimeter. By fixing the liner to the floor throughout, we eliminate the possibility of air getting underneath and pushing the liner above the water surface. For the perimeter, Pat screws the timbers to the floor and then attaches the liner with gaffer tape. Okay, so we've got our pool built. Now's the moment of truth. This is actually the first time we've done anything with water in the studio, so I'm a little bit terrified, but what could go wrong? Whee! This feels very unusual doing what I'm doing right now. Okay, we'll just lay that down and let it go. I wanted to wait. Easy. I wanted to wait until I'd rigged, you know, the kind of drape and the lighting and stuff, but I think this is gonna take a really long time. So 
under the advice of everyone else, <laughs> we're gonna get started now. Ah, please don't take 10 hours. Um, Pete, could you grab a roll of carpet so, and put it at the side so that when I step off, I can dry my feet? All hands on deck for this one. We're using three four-foot Kina flows mounted on a scaffold. To the box, ready to go. We be fast, they be slow. I love lights over walk. I know, terrifying idea, isn't it? making sure we keep all cable connections off the floor for safety. Lights above water, what could possibly go wrong? For our backdrop, we're using Kilo Surge Blackout Drape, also hung from scaffold. We're leaving about a foot of excess drape on the floor so that we can then hang it over the lip of the pool to cover that slightly shiny surface. Hey guys, what's going on today? Just ahead. Once we've rigged the kinos, we raise the scaffold to about 12 feet. Yeah, I'm going to be super careful with this one. Yeah, yeah going up a ladder with wet feet. OK, how can I avoid that? First one, step on. Look. I get up the ladder, drying my feet first and start adding some safety chains and ropes to make our rig safe. Okay, so that's kind of the toughest part of the rig done. Obviously we've got our three kinos on the scaff pole. These are really light and the, 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 the scaffolding that we've used uh, is aluminium, so this is really light too. Um, but I've just added this rope to the scaff in the ceiling as a redundancy, as well as the safety chains that we've got here. We're working above water. I mean, I'd always add things if I'm putting anything up at height. I put something to stop it from falling if the thing it's connected to doesn't work. But in this case, we're above water. So I kind of, I've got about three separate redundancies work in here because, well, it's fairly self-explanatory really. So it probably goes without saying, don't try this at home. Uh, but I'm also guessing that your house is not about 50 foot tall and a warehouse. So uh, you probably can't, just as well. We fire up the kinos and see how it's looking. As expected, the next thing we need to do is flag the light from the backdrop. Because we want to get some light happening on Pete, not just, just straight top down, I want to get a little bit on here so we can see a bit more of him in the darkness. What that means is I've angled the kinos kind of towards the background, which when you're shooting on black is a complete no-no. What you need to do is make sure you've not got any light hitting that blackout so that when you then crush it in post, it's just pure black. So that's what we want. So in order to offset the fact that I have fired the lights towards the backdrop a little bit, we're then gonna black out. So I'm gonna drape this, and what that'll do is flag that light so that we still get our slightly toppy fronty light, but nothing happening on the back. And while I've got you, if you didn't know, we recently started a Patreon with lots of different tiers that gives you access to stuff that you just won't find on YouTube. From early episode access, elements packages, extra post tutorials, and of course some excellent community banter. Once our kinos are flagged, it's time to take a moment, just see how it's looking and figure out our next move. It's clear that the kinos as they are are too hot. We've already hired in a 20 foot China silk for this, which is a really light silk to soften the light and spread it so that we get a nice fall off of light rather than that obvious line of light across the surface. Happily, our buddy Jack Lilly stopped by to lend a hand getting this silk rigged. Oh, there's only gonna be so many times I'm up for doing that. Ugh. Doing everything we can to keep it out of the water. Sure. All good here. I'm fine. I'm fine. Ideally, we'd have some big double wind-up stands to hold the silk, but we're working with what we've got here. So we used weighted C stands with arms to give us the height that we need. To pull the silk taut in the center, we rope it to our balcony on one side and then a stand on the other. Yo!
Okay, so walk back. It, the main issue is the, the floor, really, that we're seeing it, we're seeing the variation of it. It's not a perfect floor, you know? The ripples are lovely, um, and that's all working great, but we can just see the floor. Can I see, can I see you in? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can get that. Yeah, yeah. Because I think exposure-wise, oh, it's... Oh, man, it looks, it looks great. No, it does. No, it does look really great. Um, no, I'm super happy. Uh, the only thing I've got an issue with really is that, yeah, and I just don't know if that's something we can... Once the silk was all rigged, we shot a test to check that it was going to work in the grain. So we've got our shot and it's always, it's a bit of a trade-off between lighting the subject that's on the water and not having too much light on the water so that you can sort of start kind of picking up the texture of what's beneath the water. I mean, it's a black floor, but it's, you know, there are ripples where we stuck it down and stuff. One option is to add dye, like uh, food dye, to the water, which will make it super, super black, which will make it all the more reflective and we see no, uh, no detail on the floor. So that's our ideal, but also it's not ideal because then you're working with a lot of dyed water um, and it's, you know, messy. Um, so we're going to just bring this into our grading software to see if what we've got is okay, if it will work. Um, before you sort of start committing stuff and shooting, you kind of need to know that it's going to work in post. So we're doing a quick check first. Their models, <laughs> all of their, their, their PR photography is just ridiculous. It is a bit. No one looks like that on set. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that black point is now set at the floor. Right. Um, technically, that should crush everything. Yeah. To the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing a little bit of that back edge. Yeah, there was, there was, I know exactly that point. That was just a bit where the uh, thing had gotten rubbed up. Yeah, that's definitely within the realms of yeah. tweakability, isn't it? Getting enough exposure on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's on something that's black, right? So... Bloody hell! <laughs> it works! <laughs> like and subscribe! <laughs> so now that we're happy with it, it's on with the show. Time to shoot my bits and, of course, for Pete to do his thing. Because we're getting shots that we plan to insert into a pre-existing film, we regularly check it to make sure our camera height and eye lines match. How's your toes? Nice and cold? The only bit of me that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, really shallow steps, because essentially they're, they're on a track moving with him, which we're not doing. Excitable, uh, etc. cetera. <laughs> 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 oh, Scarlet. Mm, minx. It's beach wear break. time. Spring bait bitches. Break, break. We'll get a medium, so like, so we see the yeah. and then we'll get a wide of that as well. Um, and Scarlett will probably just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. It's like a bit of an airplane. Yeah, it is like that. Okay, um, more? More. And one more lunge. <laughs> squeeze it, you've got to squeeze it before you blow it. What? If you squeeze the valve, it'll let more air in. That's good to know. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, it's really, really hard. There you go. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, no, no. Right, okay, is that enough? Good. Now let's never speak of this again, right? Get... <laughs> and then the only challenge that's left is to get the shots and try and keep a straight face. <laughs> okay, now give me one with it up and you kind of like almost giving it a bit of a like. It... Where are you going? <laughs> okay, that's great, man, that's great. <laughs> I don't think we need any more than, than that. Although I was happy with the final result, if I were to do this again with more money, I would have stuck a much blacker fabric like velour or velvet on top of the waterproof lining to improve the reflectivity and help preserve some of those mid-tones that were lost when crushing the shadows to black. Lives and learns. So we hope you enjoyed that. We hope you're enjoying the show. If you're enjoying the channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, share with your friends, enemies, whoever. 
We're also on Instagram, reluctantly on Facebook and Twitter. Get in touch. Let us know what you want to see.